now I'm happy to welcome Eric Schinmann, CEO at Sprint Bioscience. Welcome, Eric. Thank you very much. So I, I will today uh, talk about um, three things mainly. Um, the uniqueness of our fragment-based uh, drug discovery program. Um, I will also talk about our track record um, in our portfolio of um, six programs, uh, three of which are out-licensed, um, and um, also talk about our uh, business model, uh, which is about multiple shots on goal on our overarching uh, goal, which is to um, uh, deliver uh, profitable growth in the, the midterm perspective. So if we start with the fr fragment-based drug discovery platform, that consists of um, the novel targets that we focus on, giving us opportunities to deliver high-quality first-in-class opportunities to, to partners. Um, we're focusing on oncology as the, um, there is significant um, unmet medical need in this field, and this is um, increasing as the number of cancer patients around the world um, is uh, increasing. And in addition to that, and the good news is that there are um, scientific advances um, in this field, and um, at the same time there's an increasing demand from uh, the pharma industry of novel um, early programs um, as well. Uh, we have a focused and agile organization and a very well-developed process um, to enable us to develop such first-in-class opportunities at a speed which is um, uh, three times uh, that um, of the industry standard and at half the cost um, as well. In terms of the track record, uh, we, we have delivered three um, programs um, that are now out-licensed. The total deal value of that is 747 uh, million US dollars and uh, on top of that also um, significant royalties. Uh, we have three additional internal programs um, that we're now marketing to potential partners and we have the capacity to add one additional program um, to the portfolio as well. So why then focus on uh, the early stages of drug development? Well, uh, the um, answer to that is that the industry has uh, changed this strategy. It's looking to externalize the early stages of development as innovation uh, is seen to be much better um, in, in smaller um, uh, companies. If you look at this uh, data, it's, it's quite obvious that most of the oncology deals, and those are a lot, um, are done in the early uh, stages of development. And the uh, deal values on average are not higher as you move um, towards the later stages um, of development. And as the programs move into uh, clinical development, there's an exponential increase of the costs of the programs as well. You need to bear in mind, obviously, that not all programs will reach um, the market. Um, but what is quite clear is that there's a good chance to move from the stages that we um, are in, that is the preclinical stage, into first um, in man studies, and then from first in man studies to the first um, efficacy studies in uh, patients as well. If you also look at the area where we have a, a great focus, which is immune oncology, uh, the likelihood of approval is twice that um, of uh, uh, programs on average. Um, and if you also add biomarkers, which um, will allow um, patient uh, pre-selection, um, that likelihood of approval increases to three times the normal. So if we look at um, our um, model then, where we outlicense at an early stage against an upfront payment, um, it gives us multiple revenue streams uh, throughout um, a, a program's uh, development. Um, so milestones um, as the program approaches uh, clinical development uh, at the various stages of clinical development, at approval, and once the program reach um, uh, certain uh, sales milestones. And when the products are on the market, uh, there's uh, significant uh, royalty payments as well. So we have now three programs. Um, and from those three programs, there is then um, uh, multiple uh, revenue streams already. 
uh, we have re received uh, significant um, uh, revenues from both the uh, uh, program out license to decipher the VPS 34, the Petra 01, um, which is now licensed to Hybricell, and also the Nash program license to um, LG Chem. I will now switch to uh, talk about um, our platform, uh, the starting point, which is uh, the novel oncology protein targets, and um, those um, are a lot, um, which is good news for uh, patients um, uh, in the future with uh, cancer. Uh, we um, do not discover these entirely ourselves. Obviously, they, they are um, starting points that are developed in um, uh, for the most part in academia. Uh, we have academic collaborations. The most important one is with the Karolinska Institute, uh, where we have one source. Uh, additional sources is scientific literature and scientific conferences. And in addition to that, we also do data mining and bioinformatics studies. Um, we have um, a rich network of uh, oncology, that is clinician uh, advisors and scientific advisors. And we also get a lot of input from our network of um, contacts with uh, Big Pharma and uh, Biotech as well. A couple of words about the teams. Um, the teams work in a very close, cross-functional uh, manner um, and in a very effective manner um, called the uh, a, a scrum process or we're a, a developed scrum process. This is the same type of processes that uh, um, startup tech companies uh, use to, to, in a very uh, cost-effective way, uh, deliver their programs. Um, we have um, close collaborations uh, between the chemists, the protein um, uh, scientists and, and the biologists um, that enable uh, very uh, rapid and quick um, uh, processes taking the programs forward. The process itself, uh, the fragment-based drug uh, discovery uh, process, is a de-risk approach. Um, we, um, in, in this uh, slide, uh, it protein, uh, a, a protein starting point is depicted in blue. Uh, so we create a model of that. Um, we have a proprietary fragment library, um, which we have high uh, amount of knowledge and experience around. We can very quickly um, uh, test these fragments in the protein and determine whether or not this should be um, taken into a full-blown uh, program um, as well, where we uh, develop uh, molecules. And with this approach, uh, the advantages is uh, that we can, uh, in multiple ways, build these molecules. Uh, we can um, uh, build a rich amount of uh, different types of molecules of a very um, uh, high affinity, high, highly potent uh, uh, molecules um, as well. And as I said, we can do this faster, um, uh, three times faster on average and at half the, the cost, which um, gives us the possibility to uh, deliver these first-in-class uh, precision medicine opportunities to potential partners. Uh, the approach is well established, um, the, the fragment-based drug discovery uh, approach. Um, and it has been used in uh, what is now six uh, FDA-approved uh, drugs, and there's some 30 uh, additional uh, programs in clinical development as well. This slide gives you a bit more detail around our uh, way of working. So uh, we determine um, new novel uh, protein opportunities. And if they look promising uh, from a biology and, and commercial perspective, um, and um, seem to fit our small molecule fragment-based um, approach, uh, then we test them against our fragment library. Uh, we can then, if we get a hit, uh, very quickly determine whether to take it into um, to a full-blown uh, process and, and invest more in it. Um, and then we build the molecules, uh, we synthesize the molecules, we test them in terms of the properties of the molecules and their uh, biology as well. Um, we modify this um, in several cycles um, and at the um, end of the period uh, we will have uh, a greater understanding of the bi biology, the mechanism of action. Uh, we'll have um, several uh, patentable um, high quality molecules um, as well and also um, for the most 
part um, a biomarker uh, as well uh, and then a first-in-class opportunity um, for the potential partner. This is our portfolio as it looks now, and as I mentioned, we have the opportunity to add one or the capacity to add one additional program um, to the portfolio per, per year. Um, we have three outlicensed programs. Uh, the VPS 34 program is now in um, later stage preclinical development and, and uh, uh, prepared for uh, the selection of a candidate drug and the uh, studies. Uh, necessary for the documentation ahead of an IND and moving that program into um, clinical development. The Petra01 program is in a similar stage of development. Uh, as for the NASH program together with LG Chem, we just recently uh, announced that this program is now moving into a very decisive uh, proof of concept study with new improved uh, molecules ahead of taking that further into uh, development and preparing that for, for clinical development. I will talk a bit more about our internal programs. Uh, the most advanced one is the VADA program, uh, which involves the protein VRK1. Um, this protein um, is something that uh, the tumor cells utilize, um, or this mechanism, um, I would say, to repair faulty DNA. And it's also involved in cell cycle control. So if you inhibit this protein, which is um, increased in uh, s several types of uh, tumor, uh, solid tumors, um, if you inhibit this, uh, you will block that repair mechanism and the tumor cells will not be able to su survive and divide and the immune system um, can then take care of the tumor cells. Um, so in addition to solid tumors, there is also uh, orphan indications uh, for, for this type of a program. And we're moving that now, uh, this program now, into uh, proof, of, proof of concept study. Um, in terms of the marketing of the program, we have several um, ongoing parallel um, partner, uh, partner discussions uh, around this program. The DISA program involves the T-REX1 um, protein. Um, this is a mechanism that tumor cells use to escape um, the immune system. Um, there is faulty um, DNA in the cells of tumors. Um, normally you don't have uh, DNA in the cytosol. Um, if you block this, um, the uh, tumor cells cannot um, escape the immune system and the, uh, the cancer cells and the cancer is then um, uh, addressed by, by the immune system. We have an advantage in this program. Uh, obviously, we're not working al alone, but we, we have a, we're in the forefront, um, giving us the opportunity to, again, be first in class as we've um, uh, determined the three-dimensional structure um, of the human T-Rex uh, protein. And um, as with the VADA program, we're continuing um, to, to uh, progress this program and uh, have positive data to present, and we're moving the T-Rex program um, to a proof of concept study uh, next year. And we have, uh, for this program, also a clear interest from, from several uh, potential partners. The NEMA program, um, we just recently um, announced the protein, the NNMT uh, protein, uh, which is involved in the tumor microenvironment, um, where um, the tumor cells have an increased uh, need for me uh, metabolism or energy. Um, and this protein is increased in, in uh, solid tumors, and if you block it, um, uh, the tumor cells will not be able to um, survive as well. Uh, there's been quite some, some recent interest in this potential uh, mechanism of action, and we look forward to uh, start presenting this in the near-term future as well. So in summary, I've talked to it today about the uniqueness of the um, fragment-based drug discovery um, program, the uh, combination of um, the opportunity with novel oncology um, target proteins um, with a lot of scientific advances at the same time as there is an industry demand for new opportunities and a, a clear commercial uh, potential uh, as well. 
and that we can deliver high quality first in class precision medicine opportunities um, has been shown uh, in our track record of uh, three out license programs and we now have uh, three additional programs uh, that we're um, marketing as well. This gives us um, a business model is, which is quite unique um, uh, amongst uh, biotech companies where we have multiple shots on goal uh, to, to reach our uh, mid-term goal to become a profitable growth company. So with that, thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation, Eric. Thank you. Uh, you, you talked about the NEMA program and uh, I was just uh, wondering what your marketing strategy is for that program. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, obviously the first uh, interactions will now happen at the upcoming uh, bio international meeting in the US um, uh, in, in the, towards the middle of this uh, month. Uh, this will be the first real opportunity to interact with potential partners. And the process normally is that um, you get the first sign of interest at, at a, um, uh, a first presentation and that leads to, to sort of uh, a more in-depth um, interaction as well. And, and the good thing for us, as this is a, uh, still a quite early program, uh, is that we can steer um, the continued development of the program with the feedback and the interest uh, from potential partners. Um, they will, they will um, ask for certain types of um, studies, certain types of uh, data and documentation. And, and uh, with that input from several uh, potential partners, we can, we can also craft uh, the documentation um, as we move the program along um, in, in the most optimal way as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you also talked a little bit about how your business model is, is quite unique. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about uh, the benefits of your business model? Yeah, um, obviously this is a good fit with the industry as such, as mentioned. Um, so, so I think um, we, we fit very nicely into the industry needs. Um, I think the other thing that I would like to highlight is, is um, the multiple shots on goal approach. So, so rather than taking the full risk of taking a program as far as possible, as, as many other companies do, into clinical development with the need to actually finance that. Uh, we have a relative, relatively low investment to, to actually uh, get this um, quite large uh, portfolio. And we've shown that we can out-license. Uh, we have uh, three ad additional programs and we're adding uh, additional programs. So it's a sort of a de-risked um, uh, approach. Um, in, in, in terms of the opportunities. Um, at the same time, we have significant upside as, as indicated as well. Mm -hmm. And lastly, would you say that uh, Sprint Bioscience is revolutionizing the cancer drug development scenario? I think uh, we're contributing to it. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we are giving the rest of the industry opportunities to, to actually leverage on the advances that uh, we've seen in the scientific literature. So we're seeing our role as as actually industrializing those um, scientific advances and, and uh, taking the first important steps towards um, developing these into new therapeutic uh, opportunities for, for cancer patients. Mm -hmm. well, that's great. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us today and we wish you all the best with your work. Thank you.